Hey guys, so while we wait uh, and cycle these batteries over there on the other bench, I thought that I'd make a video about something else. By the way, if you don't know what's happening here, these are lithium iron phosphate batteries that we found on the internet and they were selling for really cheap prices. And so I ordered a box so that I can test them out and they just arrived yesterday. So I'm cycling over there on my charger just to see if the capacity actually works out. So. While that happens over there, let's look at something else. I want the superficial, I want the tragic. So let's talk about this thing here. This was sent to me by Tom Ammerman. Uh, battery hookup or alarm hookup uh, is the seller on eBay, right? And so this is just a battery for powering your laptop. It's actually pretty cool. Um, it's a 95 watt hour capacity right so it's almost like right to the edge of what is uh allowed on airplanes right the minimum the maximum it's 100 watt hours so that's why this is um 95 watt hours but then it says power tech 75 watt lithium ion polymer and i think the 75 watt is what it could deliver and it's designed to be charged right through this little thing with one of those little wall warts it's not that little it's actually pretty big as you can see it over there on the floor um you charge this battery and then you use a cable this cable with this different types of connectors right and you connect it here and then on the other side there's a bunch of these little uh adapters that you could convert into a bunch of different things and it's mostly to charge laptops, right? So if you have a laptop that has this, this, uh, there's an intermediate little uh, connector here that will tell this thing what voltage to deliver. Because, you know, all laptops have different voltages. So it'll do anything between 10 and 20 volts. And I was trying to figure out how it does it. And all I can think is that maybe that has a set like resistor value. It's got three legs and it uses the value, the resistant, the, res the resistive value between two of the legs to modify the DC to DC on this thing to change it to choose whatever voltage, right? While I was doing that, I, you know, I spliced the cable and I was trying to figure out if we could like use them without changing them, without modifying them and use them for something else because I mean, these are useful for laptops and stuff, right? But most of us, uh, I don't know, at least me, I am lucky enough to have a modern laptop that has charging through USB-C now. And so this doesn't work. Uh, this is essentially the, the equivalent of this. I have one of these for, for mine, right? And this actually is the same thing. This is a 98 uh, watt hours, right? So it's it's the same size essentially You know physically you can see that this is bigger because it uses older technology this uses the same cells eight of those 18650s um, And there when you add it up uh, In order to get the 98 one hours they have to be the 3400 milliamp hours So essentially they have to have this uh, 3400 milliamp hour uh NCR 18650B or one of the other two or three cells that are 3350 or 3400 milliamp hours. There's one that's like 3500 milliamp hours. That's where it's at. So there's eight of those inside of this thing. And then this has a USB-C and that connects to my laptop and it, it charges at like 20 volts or something. So this is the modern version of this guy. So while I was messing around with that, I bricked it. I stopped working now, it doesn't charge the lights, it doesn't tell you the state of charge. And so I thought, well, let's take it apart. Let's see if there are any parts inside that we can use, uh, like the battery, for example, right? So you have to take off the little corners here, they're just like glued, and then I took the back, because it's not really clear. Uh, how to take it apart. So I realized that the way to take it apart is by taking the front thing. So let's do that right now. Use our little clippers here. All right. So you click on one of the corners, you lift it. And as you can see, I had pre-lifted this before I rolled the camera. 
and then I thought, oh, let me record this. So you don't need this. Just throw it away. Now you get a good little screwdriver to take the screws. Here we go. Let's look at the right tip. This is the iFixit kit that they sent me. Thank you, iFixit. This thing has a very strong smell of the electrolyte for some reason, which is usually not a good sign. Right at this point, I decided that there's not much uh, useful stuff inside. I mean, that's a huge uh, circuit board that doesn't do much more than just adjust 11.1 volts to 20 or and everything in between, right? And so because it's brick now and I couldn't really get it to work, then I thought, well, let's just take the cells out. Let's unglue those uh, lipo cells that are on there and then figure out how to use them. Oh, the bad or... Ah! <laughs> Don't do that. All right, so there's not much else to do but to try and take these out of this case here. Is it worth keeping them in this case? No, not really. Alright, so to remove these you'll have to use something uh, flat and hard. You just have to squeeze it in there and then you undo the glue. You have to be careful not to uh, bend them too much. And then you'll have to cut these or these so you can slide that in there. So that's a tedious process. All right. All right, so now that I've cut these last two pieces, you do the same thing. You sneak this in there. You break the glue. You lift it up. And there it is. You get all the cells out. All right, so here is what you will find inside that big old thing. This is the battery. And when you compare it to this, it's about the same size. It's just that packaging, the electronics on that other thing were really big, right? Um, so is it worth it to buy that and take off these batteries? This, taking these off of that thing is, wasn't easy. And you know, this is 101 hours, right? Let's see how many 18650s it would take to, to make the same amount of battery. All right, guys, so aside from using that unit the way it is, the way it comes, I say 101 hour, you know, power pack, you know, USB power pack, because it does have a USB thing. Or you can use it with your laptop. Yeah, it's um, it's gonna be kind of hard, right? Because you know you can buy one of these new for under a hundred bucks, like 60, 70 bucks or something. I paid for this, um, and so you know it's much more technology is smaller. Uh, the energy density is better, and it's got better connections. Um, so there's not much use for this one now. Now, if you want to take it apart and take out the cells, you could always do that. It's not the easiest thing. It takes up quite a bit of work. And what you end up is with this, you know, there's one, two, three, four, five, six of these cells that should yield about 100 watt hours. Um, and they're pretty much just kind of standard generic LiPo packs, I think. And so these should be pretty good. They're not, you know, they're not the high C rated lipos, but they're just the regular, you know, energy dense lipos because they are kind of dense. So I put this in a scale and it came in at exactly one pound, one ounce. So, so to put that in perspective, let's compare up to the other cells that I currently have, right? All right. So all of these groups of cells here are 100 watt hours of energy. So it's the same energy. Uh, storage capacity right but look at the the size comparison right this is the best that there was up until recently this is what you will find um, in every uh, Tesla Model S uh, in every Tesla Model S car right or or a variant of this right um, 
these are what's currently on my Samba, the 2600 milliamp hours cells, right? So two extra cells it takes to do that. And this one is 12.6 ounces. This one right here is 15.6 ounces. And then we have our lipos here that we took out of that pack is one pound, one ounce. And then here are the uh, full river uh, uh, lithium iron phosphate, right? This is older technology. This is more stable chemistry, right? But less dense. And so you can see that, yeah, it's quite a bit bigger than that, right? By volume. And also the weight. Look at that. It's one pound, 13 ounces, you know, and one, three more ounces, it's two pounds. So it's almost two pounds right here. And then comparing those to the headways, well, these are three pounds, three ounces, over three pounds, 100 watt hours right here. Uh, and so looking at that, you would say, well, why would you want to use this, right? And the, and the reason is that these cells right here are power cells. These will put out 200 amps, you know, each. So 12 volts, uh, 200 amps, that's, this will put out one, one and a half kilowatts, right, of continuous power. So these are pretty good for what they do. They're just not energy cells. They're not, they're not good at storing the most amount of energy, though that goes you know that job goes to these kinds of cells over here these are the most compact cells out of all of these ones here and the lightest right and so that's why i'm putting those on my samba so to put it in comparison like that you know lead acid would be like somewhere way back here the the weight and the and the energy density is like way down there right um and so these are the lithium cells that we currently have access to and this puts it in perspective. This is where those uh, lipo cells that you can buy in that unit belong. So they're not, they're kind of in the middle. They're not the lightest, they're not the most energy dense, but they're also not the most power dense, right? So these are the most power dense that we have. Um, what about us price? Let me work out the price here and show it to you. All right, so here's how the pricing uh, breaks down. And there's a couple, there's a couple surprising things here, right? Number one is that those Panasonics, those 3,400 milliamp hour cells at $16 per, you know, 100 watt hours, they're actually pretty affordable. I mean, these are some of the most affordable lithium cells on the internet today. And I keep saying that, and I know maybe not everybody believes that or whatever, but as far I mean, you know, as far as I can tell, these are some of the best prices. And next is that those lipos batteries are not priced uh, well to be harvested. Now, now Tom did suggest that he was willing to 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 lower the price of those. You know, if we can find a use for them and stuff. And so, for harvesting, definitely at fifty dollars per one hundred watt hours of battery, that just doesn't work, right? as there are much more available choices that, that are more affordable. So this is where I'm going to end the video. I wish I had more time to actually make something, make a project with those batteries. Maybe in the near future, I will be able to do it. So I hope you enjoyed this battery conversation and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching and thank you for all your support. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> wow, look at this. This is the one that you went to space behind.